evolving with Corey Castle. It's a brand new episode with Mikey Dillon. Mickey Dillon, second time guest. Called him Mikey for some reason, because I'm a dick. Ow. I deserve that. I deserve that. Look at that, look at that mug. That was on accident. Hello today. Good afternoon. Hello, we made it. Oh, uh, you know, after after much trying, after much trying, <laughs> I, I was, you know, I've become such a big fan. I mean, I was already a fan of yours before, and I was also like cool with it, knowing that like somehow we we like became friends on Instagram or something at some point, and I was like you know what, this guy's really interesting. I would like to, like, have a conversation with him and, like, know him a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I started listening to some of your shows, and I, I don't know if I had listened to too many before when we had our first podcast. No, it wasn't out yet. But was, was it, that was the case? How, what, so what, what was it? Not to interrupt you, sorry, just taking Please over do. your show and immediately from the jump. Um, we were talking about the videos that I was doing back then, like during COVID and all that. Oh like, yeah, you were like, you were like, <clears throat> sit down and have a cup of coffee or whatever. Yes, yes, yes was, that's I was, right. I forgot I was all of screaming in the car. <laughs> oh my god, yes, yes. But I think during the episode, which crazy, I I was looking, I was watching some of it today. Crazy that that was three years ago. Is that insane? Was that three years ago? It was three years ago. And I think at that time, like during the episode somewhere, I don't know, I didn't rewatch the whole thing, but I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure I said something about starting a podcast that it was like coming up, I was gonna do it. But oh, it wasn't It wasn't out even out yet, it's crazy. Was I promoting you to, it was like, was I like advocating for you to start a podcast? It was already happening, but I think that you were very encouraging when I brought it up. <laughs> I, I frequently am. Because I mean, a lot of times, and, I, and, I, and I'll get on a soapbox talking about this, because a lot of times people will go, ah, I'm not going to start a podcast. There's already a zillion podcasts out there. And and I go like, well, like, you're the only one that's you, though. Right. <laughs> right. And, and also, I try to relate it to, like, musicians who are trying to make it, right? It's kind of, mm -hmm. podcasting is like a new industry in in its popularity, like it's new to the masses. Obviously it's been around. And it's like the only the last couple of years that people are really trying to do it in a way that's a little oversaturated. But it's the same thing as music. Like people have been trying to get record deals since the fucking dawn of time. And it's very competitive and a lot of talented people don't make it. But that doesn't mean that some people don't and that doesn't mean that there's not the next person coming that we right. need. It doesn't mean talented people don't still try. Right, and at least put your fucking hat in the ring instead of mm -hmm. sitting on your ass wondering what would have happened if, if you put in some effort. And 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 for myself, and I, I think I probably told you about this before, but like it's a it's like a historic record on like where I was in my life when this kind of thing was happening and like I could listen back to this in twenty years and be like, Well, this is the kind of dude I was and this is what I might have been going through at the time. I'm like, oh that was when when I was going through that thing in my life or, you know, that sort of, that sort of, uh, milestones, you know? hundred percent. I just was talking about on a recent episode, how someone talking to me about an older episode caused me to go back and listen to it. And I believe it was like my third episode out. And I just listened back to the story of what had happened, which was very funny in a way that I didn't even remember. And then I also got to see how much I've improved in storytelling and editing skills and sound quality and things I've learned. So it really is almost like a scrapbook in a sense of your life and even the interviews as well. Cause I interview a lot of musicians. I've listened back to some of those and been like, wow, I can't believe I did that. You know, it's like such a great memory. I, I listened to some of the old ones that I did too. Like some of the interview ones. And they're very much like, um, uh, um, uh, 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 and then, um, so you completely sound like Chris Farley. And he's like, remember when you said the love that you gave is equal to the love that you take? Remember when like, you were with the Beatles? I feel like I used to edit a lot of that out of mine. Mm -hmm. And 
So it's like, you can't really hear it in the old ones, but now I notice that I don't have to do that anymore, which shows me that I've gotten more comfortable. But yeah, I used to do that all the time. I used to be like, oh, um, and I would talk too fucking much. Like I've learned when I'm interviewing someone sometimes to just shut the fuck up. You don't always have to be like, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Like just shut up and let them talk. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. I think the Zoom of it all though makes it like, I feel like I have to show that I'm engaged because I'm not sitting face to face. And then, and then also I don't know what to do with my fucking stupid face. If I'm just sitting there listening, like I look like I'm nodding off. I look like Joe Biden. Like, I don't know where I am. Sleepy. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I I was, I was just nodding off in traffic. I was falling asleep. That's dangerous. Yeah, very much. It's a, you know, driving so boring to me. Like I, I get so bored. It's like, <laughs> like, I, I I, I, especially, driving. especially like when I'm alone. Especially driving alone, I get so bored. And I, like whenever I have to go somewhere that I know is far, I'll like message a bunch of my friends and be like, "You doing anything? Feel like going on a road trip with me?" <laughs> so I just yeah. don't want to be by myself. I feel like as long as I have good music on. I like to drive by myself, especially at night. We might have different. We have, might have different tastes in music. Um, that maybe. Not 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 ta- not as much as tastes is the is the thing. It's just like relationship with the music, I guess. Because yeah, like, like I'll hear music and I'm like, oh, this is good. But like, mm-hmm. I'm not somebody who's going to be like, ooh, that got into my soul, and I got the. Pulse pounding. Oh. <laughs> Wait, it's so annoying that it sounds as sexual as it does because it's not. But everyone assumes immediately that it's like a porn podcast. But I kind of, I've kind of grown to like that now. Good, think that. <laughs> sure. I mean, if it, if it helps the clicks, it's. I mean, I did have a porn star on at one point. That was interesting. Cool. Yeah. Uh, what kind of porn star? A gay one. Was it one that you were very familiar with? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no way to answer that. Like, no, 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 I've never seen any of his work before that. Of course, I had a lot of questions after watching a certain amount of footage. You know, I needed to know. I had to do the research. <laughs> I also was single at the time, so I was being a little bit flirtatious. Mm-hmm. Oops. Well, I mean, you're having fun. <laughs> yeah, but I don't want to be like, you know, I don't want to be accused of being a Weinstein at any point in my future. Like, I'm using this podcast to flirt with people because that's not the case. But, you know. Um, I, I think when I was single, I used to I used to uh, match with girls on Tinder and ask them if they wanted to be a guest on my podcast. <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> As you can see, it never worked. That is insanity. Well, I mean, something worked because now you have a fiance, so good for you. I met her on my podcast. Did you really, or are you making that yeah, up? Yeah, for real, for real. The, the first, the first um, conversation we ever had was on this podcast. About um, what? Uh, she was a guest on a, a show on Netflix, a singing show called Sing On. Uh, okay. It was hosted by Titus Burgess. From the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, that, yeah, that guy? Yeah, Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir? You don't know the Pinot Noir song? No, I guess that's not. Like, that's like his most famous scene or thing from that show. Is, it's is really, it from that show? Yeah, it's Pinot Noir. You gotta look it up. You gotta, I won't even tell you what it's about. Can, can, you just keep sing, can you just sing it for me? Absolutely the fuck not. <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 we, we had a mutual friend who asked her if, if she wanted to be a guest on my podcast and told me that she would make a great guest for my podcast. Mm-hmm. And we, we just just hit it off on the show. And after it was over, we stayed on recording uh, for, you know, for we, not recording, just off the off the air. But we were just stayed on the Zoom just like this on the on the stream yard yeah. uh, for two or three hours just chatting and uh, and. We were like, I, I just said, like, at one point, I was like, where do you live? And it was only 42 minutes away from here. Oh, wow. And I was like, let's hang out. Like, let's do something. Let's hang out. And then yeah. 
and we've just been hanging out the whole time since then. That's great. Yeah. And now we live together. Actually, side note, so funny, because I always think about like, oh, I can't wait to get to the point where I have a studio because this is my fucking living room. Um, and I can't wait to have get to the point where I have like a studio out of the house, maybe like a little living space in there too. And then I got out of bed today. I mean, I was up, I was out, I was doing my thing. I came home, I laid down, almost took like a little nap. And then I just popped up when I was ready to go, turned on my lights and sat down. And I was like, maybe I don't need a fucking studio. And then you were like, oh, I'm stuck in traffic. And I was like, see, there is an advantage to being at home. <laughs> well, this was my home up until August. Oh, okay. I was living here. Got it. But I, but I, I moved to Delco from Bucks County. Mm -hmm. These these are these are uh, Philly Philly suburbs. Okay. Uh, I forget where where you where you're from, but I'm in New I'm in New York. New oh that's right that's right that's right that was the the whole the whole oh man I wish I had a coffee mug with me I'd be like sit down get the coffee here you want to borrow mine <laughs> <laughs> what a time man what a time like uh, I shouldn't have listened back to that episode too Did honestly you very unprepared of both of us because I scanned through some of it like while I was waiting for you but I mm. did not rewatch it last night why didn't I do that stupid mm. well you know like the spontaneity of the conversation and like the organic nature of it is what what really like fills me up what really mm -hmm. like makes me feel juiced about it and real good about it so like we can we can get like let's say we can go 30 40 minutes without like really having a path and then right. one kind of presents itself mm -hmm. and things unfold and we bro break into a concept that we never thought we'd approach, you know? Yeah. That's m kind of my favorite stuff. Honestly, I feel like you and I could separately each talk to a wall, so we're fine. <laughs> Very likely. <laughs> I mean, have you, you, you mostly do solo episodes though, right? I was going to say, I basically do talk to a wall once a week for an hour. Yeah. I, I, I've done a very few solo ones because I feel like I run out of stuff to talk about. Mm -hmm. You know what I, I feel like I've already kind of exposed everything. I've already been as vulnerable as I can be in the conversations that I'm having with other people on here where like every interesting thing I could, not to say that I won't have interesting things to talk about, but I feel like there's like a certain pressure on me to say right. those things. And uh, I, I just freeze up and I'm like, I, uh, I feel like something uh, always fucking happens. And honestly, I, I, I feel like I could just spit shit out. And sometimes I feel like I tell people in my life, certain stories throughout the week of things that happen. And it's almost like me practicing. If that makes sense. It's almost mm -hmm. like me developing the way I want to tell the story and spitting it out before I sit down to record. So I feel like by the time that's, I get there, I've already that's like told a the comedian story. doing open mics to get right. ready for a special. Yeah, pretty much. Or like get ready for a tour or getting ready for a late night set. Yeah. Also It'll, all not things that I've done, but, but, <laughs> but it, also depends. it also depends on my mood too. Like, and my caffeine level. So like some days I sit down here and I start and I'm like, fuck this. This is no good. We'll try it tomorrow. Have have you have you got on stage yet and tried to do comedy? No, and I was honestly thinking about that this morning, and I was like, oh, I hope he doesn't ask me because he's going to give me shit about it. Um, I mean, I have so much stuff written. I just think it's like the first and maybe only thing in my life that makes me so like anxious and scared to fail at that I've just avoided it. But then I do the thing where I sit down like today and I was like, wow, it's been three years since we did this interview and I still haven't fucking done it. Like I could have been three years in, you know? So I'm going to force myself before the end of 2024 to make my uh, open mic night debut. Cause I have plenty of stuff written that I can just pull from and kind of try to work into some like a five minutes or something. I have an abundance of fucking, the start of material. What what part of New York are you in? I'm on Long Island, so I'm about an hour, hour and a half out of the city. I've done. I, I I don't think, I don't think the club is there anymore. But I did a comedy open mic on in Long Island City at the Creek in the Cave. I don't know if that's still there. I don't know for sure. I the think, big the big one here is Governors. 
Okay, I think Creek in the Cave moved to Austin, just like everything else moved to Austin. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And now that's like a comedy hub because of mm -hmm. Rogan. Yeah. I thought about abandoning my life and moving there and trying to get a job at the mothership. <laughs> my my co-host on my wrestling podcast did that. He he got up. He's a bartender there now. At the club. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. How's that going for him? Do you know? He seems very happy. Um, That's awesome. I mean, we we don't we don't like keep tabs that often. I mean, I know he just came back to Philly and never contacted me, but I saw pictures of him oh, hanging okay. out with other friends. Great. His real friends, I guess. Nice. In this area. <laughs> I was in Philly for the first time last summer. I loved it. Okay, great. What'd you do? Um, I went to a concert with my brother. We stayed in like, I think they call it like the center city. Does that make sense? I uh -huh. don't know. Yeah. Well, what, uh, what concert was it? The weekend. Okay. What, what, what was the venue? What kind of rude fucking response was that, bitch? <laughs> oh, okay. I'm not so super familiar with The weekend. I know maybe two songs, uh, <laughs> and I barely know them. It, um, it, it was probably fun. Did he recently have some sort of, like, soul, like, selling selling a soul scandal or something? I saw, like, something on on they, something they, with, they like, burning, burning buildings and uh, imagery yeah. and blah, blah, blah. They say that all the time. The only one I believe it about is Beyonce and Jay-Z. What about that Sam Smith guy? I think he's just fucking weird. But that, that, like, they, like, showed him before and he was dressed like a Mrs. Doubtfire before, and now he dresses like the devil. I don't know. I think the gays do this thing where, and I'm qualified to speak on this, so don't start mm -hmm. with me, audience. Um, I, I just think that they do this thing where, like, uh, they feel slighted by the way that they grow up. Um, should I say we? we? We feel slighted by the way we grow up and the way that, like, religious people in our lives describe the church. And specifically mm -hmm. in an era where, like, our generation was growing up. And I feel like they try to do this thing in that position where they just totally take it and spin it and like throw it in people's faces. And I think it's fun for like a second, but when it becomes your whole thing, it's kind of stupid. It's it's very it's very like um, like like you said, re rebellious. Like I, I could I could see that. Not, I mean, not, I mean, I, I'm not I'm not in the gay community, but. Uh, I'm gonna clip that. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm strongly in the ally community of that. Considering wow. my mom, my mom's gay, my brother's gay, my sister's gay. So I grew up in a gay household mostly. Mm -hmm. uh, so I do, and, and, and especially because like we started in Catholic school. So I know like uh, getting the up, like the, um, the the kind of the rumble of that. I could feel right. that, um, but I never saw my brother wanting to put on a, a devil's a death a devil's outfit and dance around like the devil i don't know i was much more offended by the way that he tied himself up in that like chicken string wire and on that magazine cover i, I don't know what the fuck's going on with uh, him or them i don't know little little nas x and that's what that's what i mean about it like it was fun for a second when he did it it was interesting, it was provocative, but then he just keeps doing that thing over and over and over, and now it's old. But like, it's just, it's just controversy equals clicks these right. days. Right. And like, Madonna did it before, but before, there wasn't clicks, but I mean, there was dollars. Controversy is people talking about you and it's press. Right. And like, that's sort of... And I, I don't mean you hear that kind of stuff about like Rihanna too, like with that that Super Bowl halftime show. She was like, she was in like the devil red, and she was on the clouds with all the people in the white. Mm -hmm. It was it was uh, it, all the weird imagery. Yeah, but. yeah. I guess it depends on how you perceive it and what you believe. And I don't know. I I think that some people do it to cause the conversation that ends up happening more so than I think they're like cutting pigs open and putting the blood over themselves. I think that a lot of people do it to create the conversation that you and I are having right now mm -hmm. because they believe that as long as people are talking about them, it, it translates into money, which it does. 
I don't know. To each their own. Like I said, the only people I really believe have some evil shit going on in Beyonce and Jay-Z. <laughs> Something about her makes me uncomfortable. When I see her, I'm like, mm-mm, mm-mm, stay away from me. Not that I see her in real life. I meant on television. Beyonce no more. It's just not for me, you know? I'm not for everyone, and that's okay. And some things are not for me. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I fully... I fully live that I know I'm not for everybody and that's okay because I don't have to be. But that's also the, if you were for everyone, that means you're probably boring. You oh know, yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, there, there, there's plenty of stuff that like, I know if I was somebody else and, and I say this about myself all the time. Um, I, if I wasn't me, I'd get it. I'd get not liking me. I would probably also not like me if I was me. Maybe because I'd want to be me so bad I'd hate me for it. <laughs> but I'm not certain. <laughs> well, I think there's also like, when you feel secure in yourself and you feel good about yourself, it doesn't really matter what people think whose opinion you don't care about or respect, you know, like strangers. I don't know. I feel good about who I am, how I am, how I treat people. I like myself. And if you like me too, great. And if you don't, see ya. You know, I don't give a shit. I'm also turning 32 this year. It's way too late for me to start giving a fuck now what people think. I realize I still get triggered by the, the spoken aloud opinions of kids. That's totally different. That is not what I'm referring to. Kids are ruthless. And yeah. if that didn't bother you, it would be weird. You know, John Mulaney does the bit when he's like, 13-year-old kids are the meanest people alive. It's so true. It's they so they true. will find the thing about you that you don't like and point it out. Like, he does the thing when he's like, and he's like walking down the, the street and a group of 13-year-old kids walks past me. He's like, look at that high-waisted man. You got feminine hips. He's like, no, that's something I'm sensitive about. <laughs> Oh my God. One time I worked at a summer camp when I was like 18 and I had like really bad acne on my face. And one of the little kids, the kids varied in age from like, I don't know, eight, seven, eight to like 13. And this like seven or eight or nine year old kid, I don't remember, came up to me and asked me why I had red freckles all over my face. And I wanted to fucking take him and drown him in the pool. <laughs> kids are the worst. Yeah, I was wearing I was wearing a, a flannel shirt at the at this like country club that my that my fiance was performing at. Mm -hmm. And this like 13, 14 year old boy was like screamed across the pool at me, Are you a lumberjack or something? <laughs> and then and then I heard him go to his his friend oh, if I wore that shirt, blah blah and he did like this little sassy what if I wore that shirt, blah blah and I was like I I'm stewing about it now and that was like a month ago. I feel like, are you a lumberjack when you're in a flannel? It's not that outrageous, though. Like, I feel like if somebody said that to me, it'd be like, Whoa, and then I don't gone. think it was. I don't think it was that him saying that part. It was him with the murmuring afterwards mm -hmm. to yeah. the, the with the commentary uh, right after the question. Yeah. I don't know what he said. He could have said nothing at all. And somehow I'm developing some complex about it. Well, to stand in solidarity with you, I'd like to say to him, what a little piece of shit. Mm -hmm. I, I'm like, you don't have good enough friends because uh, if 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 you did, your friends would be like, "Hey, don't don't be like that. You're right. a little bitch." Right. Perhaps. Oh, so are you under the impression that I'm like a devil worshiper because my lights are red today? Oh, Is no. that why you brought that up? I no, no. Was... Okay, just checking. I mean, are you? I'm very much not religious in any sense and not to say either, you know, I'm just, I'm in my own little place. Kanye West calls it a free thinker. I don't really like him, but I'm going to use that one. Dude, I have this thing I do whenever I'm at my mom's house. Um, my mom can't stand Kanye West. <laughs> as soon as I walk into my mom's house, I go, Hey, Alexa, play Kanye West. <laughs> and then it starts playing whatever Kanye West song, and then my mom's like, Alexa, stop! Alexa, stop! <laughs> That's funny. Torture so, moms is fun. Uh, 
What's your favorite Kanye West song? Mm, could be Heartless. Could be Love Locked Out. I like the 808s album. Do you know and do you know that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I liked that album. It was different at the time. Um, I don't know. He's got a bunch of songs that I like independently. The, the song I always have Alexa play, and and I'll, I'll do this now. And for anybody who's listening, if 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 me saying this into my microphone now triggers your Alexa to start playing this song, please leave that in the comment section. Hey Alexa, play Power by Kanye West. <laughs> I don't even know that one. So, no, no, one man should have all that power, that whole thing. I'll have to play it when we're done. Well, I'm not going to play it because I'll get a strike. I'll, oh, get a copyright. I'll get a um, copyright strike. Isn't that the most annoying part of the fucking United States, Green yeah. Bastards? Do you know on television in the UK, like reality shows, whatever shows they're they're doing, they get to play the music? Because it's like, they look at it almost as you're promoting whatever music you choose to use. And I mm -hmm. don't know the ins and outs of their laws. I don't know if there's some sort of agreement. But they're not like suing and copywriting and striking shit the same way. It, it's crazy. I keep getting these strikes, these copyright strikes. And I'm like, copyright? More like copy wrong. <laughs> I don't like it. Not one bit. I don't know. Like I don't know why they haven't figured out a way to incorporate it as streams the way they do with TikTok. Like, why can't you just let us play the music and then if the algorithm picks it up, it counts as a stream and goes towards your numbers. Hello? Right. Uh, I think I, w I was live on Facebook and I was playing, I was playing, I, I was like doing a, um, like a, like a, a stream where I was watching movie trailers and, and, and somebody was trying to leave me a gift, try to like uh -huh. pay me, and then they shut it all the way down. And they were like, "No, you're on a you're on a, a strike because that's that that I'm like I'm playing it off of YouTube, that's so like so stupid. You it already got passed enough, passed through the first time for them to play it on YouTube, and now you're saying I can't play the thing I also found on YouTube. It's not like I went." Somewhere, some like shady site and got it and like I'm playing it. No, right. I went right to the place where everybody gets everything. It's so weird. It really is so weird. Yeah. Hey, hey, YouTube, knock it off, all right? <laughs> Someone should sue them. Yeah. Sue tube. <laughs> that should be a t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'll dress up in my lawsuit. Oh my god, you're so stupid. <laughs> oh, that was such a dad joke. I love it. Uh, yeah, I got a lot of those. I'm a sucker for a good dad joke. Only um, if it's good. I, I have a lot of them. I, and, you know, s stick around. That's what, <laughs> that's what I would say. I don't know where I'm going, so. Yeah, if you. I mean, if. If, if, if you are also stumbled across this channel thinking that you were just going to watch some pro wrestler talk about pro wrestling, shame on you. You're a fool. <laughs> Stick around for the puns and the dad jokes. I just looked at myself and I feel like I look high, but I'm not. Do, do you, do you want to take this moment to take a, make a little disclaimer, a little announcement to the watchers, just so uh, the, whoever's watching, hey. I know I look high. Yeah, I mean, there was a good shot that I could have been, but I'm not. Like, so I just I, imagine I do the rest of the episode like this. <laughs> it's just my eyes; they just hang low. I'm gonna have to get something done about that one day. Like, like surgery? Yeah, whatever they did to Christina Aguilera, I'm doing at 40. Wait, they they did that to Christina Aguilera? I don't know what they did to her. Her but eyes are her eyes are doing something now. No, her whole face and body are doing something. She looks like she went in a time machine. Oh, I, I have never, I haven't, I haven't ever seen. I don't keep up with uh, X Tina. Uh, me neither, but it's been inescapable on the internet. So I've seen a bunch of it, and she looks like she is twenty years younger. So whoever cut her face, removed it, and put a new one on top of it—that's what I need in my forties. 
I've straight up escaped it. You said it was unescapable. And That's I've crazy. But you, now that you've mentioned it, you the algorithms some, are listening. You and must I'm be sure, doing some devil magic to avoid that. Uh, now that you've mentioned it, I'm sure the algorithms are going to show it right to me. And as soon as they do, I'm be like, ah, you got me. I can't wait. Bastard. I can't wait. You'll be <laughs> flabbergasted, I promise. It's mind-blowing. Did, did you see the... Um, <clears throat> said the uh, Pete Holmes special on, on Netflix. It's called I'm Not For Everybody. And you already said I'm Not For Everybody earlier. But he did a whole bit where he was like, listen, shush. And he started like, just screaming out like, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna quote the entire bit because, like, I, well, I'm not gonna do it justice. But he was like, I'm "Looking for a big old dildo," and he was like <laughs> screaming it to all the people. And he's like, "Now your phones have all heard me say that, and you're gonna see ads for dildos." <laughs> That's hysterical, actually. <laughs> and it's true. That's what happens. You start talking about something, all of a sudden, it's on your fucking phone. <clears throat> has Has the algorithm ever worked in your favor at this point? Many times, yeah. I feel like Give me my, some examples, please. I feel like my YouTube shorts are my favorite thing to watch because I've had the same YouTube account for so long that the algorithm is so curated to what I like. And there's so many different things, but it's never like where I'm scrolling and I'll be like, ugh, I don't want to see this. It's always shit I want to see, even though it varies like the subject matter. So yeah, that's the best I got on that subject. I've had my YouTube for at this point, I think 15 years and like have been posting things for 15 years. And, uh, and they, some of my stuff still has like four views on it. So yeah. <laughs> like no views. At, uh, and I, I'm not, I'm not bitter about this. I'm just saying like, I don't think it's uh, curated as much to mm -hmm. me because mm -hmm. it's not uh, like there's such a wide variety but like when it comes to like Instagram or Facebook, it always shows me ads uh, curated right. for for me. Well, the ads are like a totally different animal. They're they're getting they're getting to you. They really are. Skip in three, two, one. The, the, the thing that they've been recently doing is like skip in three, two, one, and then when you go skip in three, two, one, it just skips to the next ad. Oh my it's not god! Like it no. skips ads all together. It's so annoying. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I don't need assistance in buying shit I don't need. Like, I do that enough. I don't need you to show me more shit I don't need to purchase it. Leave me alone. They should be showing more ads for YouTube Premium to eliminate the ads. Right. That's uh, that's true. But I guess that kind of, like, defeats that, that, their... Yeah, no, I guess that, that goes against their bottom line of, like, getting people to pay them money to... But they, but they make money either way, because if you're not watching the ads, you're paying for the subscription, and that shit's not cheap. It's a, it's a, it's a vicious circle. <laughs> yep. They're going to make their money one way or another. It's a tube. A big old <laughs> inner tube. <sighs> That's ironic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... It's now it's now my dream to be a guest on your show. You're invited. Uh, so let's do that soon. But in the meantime, let's do a little practice, and you can ask me anything you'd like, or tell me anything you'd like on the record. This way, you know, uh, you know, you know, no, just uh, like I'm saying, just like I said earlier, everything is this like cool like time capsule on mm -hmm. who we are. And what what we're going through at the time. Now, if if you had stuff that you were curious about, and I would be answering questions, then it would tell me later on when I listen to this episode, uh, way in the future, what I was going through. Maybe I maybe I'm, I'm vague enough in what I'm talking about so far that I won't even know. Mm -hmm. So, what kind of stuff? First, first impressions, what would make you curious about this guy? Uh, I think it's not even like a personal specific to you thing. My first thought was to ask you what your biggest pet peeve is at this moment. Mm. I don't know why it just popped into my head. I'm like, what's, what is at this time in your life is pissing you off? I, 
I get really annoyed with people who, and and my my fiance is gonna maybe take exception to this, but it's not it's not meant to be a dig at her. It's just <laughs> people when people lead in conversations like in a very clickbaity way, mm-hmm. where they like react to something for you to then go what and like. If you want to tell me a thing, just tell me the thing. Don't bait me with something first. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, like um, there was this guy. He was a wrestler. And he was growing his hair out. Like, he had short hair. And then he was growing his hair out. And I was like, oh, man, y- your hair's getting long. And he's like, yeah. I was told to grow it in. Which, like, like saying that to anybody else, they'd go... By who? The right, dust. exactly. But, but as soon as he said that, I went, oh, yeah, okay. Like, I'm just shutting those, like, clickbait, like, like you cast the cast the rod out, and I'm not biting the bait. Right. Like, that, that's a huge pet peeve of mine, is, like, when people conversationally speak in clickbait. Right. And, and phoniness, mostly phoniness. Like, when you can just sniff fakeness off somebody when they're like when they talk like like when they talk to people like they're a server at, their, at a restaurant and they're like hi hello like like when they have like a like a real like this isn't who you really are i know i wouldn't even I, talk to people like that as a server at a restaurant no i am a server at a restaurant and i don't talk to people like yeah that. yeah it's it's not mm-mm. it's just not genuine yeah, you can, it's like I don't you're, like when like you can tell. Camp counselor or something. Yeah, and if you're gonna be disingenuous, at least fucking fake it better, loser. Right, right. <laughs> I'm not buying it. I'm not buying. I always want to be as honest <laughs> as I can with any of those people. I'm like, I'm not buying it. This isn't who you really are. Just stop. Mm-mm. Drop it. No. Nope. I'm gonna just list off. I don't have a whole lot of pet peeves, but I'll list off a few that I do. have. Go for it. When people who are talking to other people that have different kind of accents and they automatically pick up that person's accent. You know what I'm saying? Like if you hang around with people in the South too much Mm -hmm. and you like pick up a Southern accent. So phony. Yeah. Uh, You know what I don't like? I don't like when people assume that other people who don't speak their language well, like for instance, English means that they're not intelligent. And that is such a common thing. And I can't stand that in people. It makes me think you're not intelligent. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it begs, it begs you to learn how to not judge people. Yeah. Like, or to and just say, well, where did you learn how to, to have a, like a, a radar on people's <laughs> intelligence. <laughs> yeah, and the worst is when that person is not that great themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so, who, who other kind? What other kind of guests have you had so far on your podcast? Um, a mo- it's mostly musicians because, as a throwback to what we were talking about earlier, like I am very much the way that you described not being with music, like. I feel like certain music, certain artists, it's like, I don't know, I can feel it in my body kind of thing. And I've just always been like that since I was a kid with music, being like a professional spectator almost. Um, So that's my favorite thing to do. And that was honestly the reason that I started this entire thing was to, I would like go to shows when I was younger and, and meet people that were in the band of whatever artist was playing or people who were a part of the crew. And I would have all these conversations with a bunch of different musicians or people who were a part of a tour. And it was just for fun. I didn't really have a reason to be talking to them. So the idea of starting the show would be that there would be like somewhere to focus that energy. And that's like my favorite part of doing it. I like doing the solo episodes and I like telling the stories And I like to make people laugh, but my favorite part, what feels most fulfilling to me is that part. So I know you said when we were going to do this, that you'd like not do one of your episodes this week. Mm -hmm. Was there any stories that you had saved up that you were going to talk about on your solo podcast that now I'm throwing that off? 
that you wanted to uh, discuss with me? No, there's an episode coming out tomorrow. To, what's today? Tuesday? Yeah, there's an episode coming out tomorrow. And then what, when are you putting this out? I'll, I'll put it on YouTube probably tonight. Uh, oh, shit. Uh, it'll 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 come out on the uh, podcasting platforms on Monday. Oh, okay. Well, then I lied because I have to talk about the VMA. So there's okay. an episode coming out tomorrow. But um, that's what I usually do. Like, if I don't often guest on somebody else's podcast, um, mm-hmm. just because I haven't met that. Not that I'm not open to it. I just haven't met that many people. Um, I did a really great crossover episode with these guys that have a podcast called The Oven, um, Franco and Mario, shout out to them. We had a really great like double episode we recorded in the same day. And yeah, whenever I do that, I just feel like, I feel like as a podcaster and as someone who has people on my show, it's like some people are really great at helping you promote it to their audience and some people just kind of let it fall flat, fall flat and they don't put in any effort into like reposting things that you tag them in. And it's not for me like about a clout thing, but it's just that if you are a musician or you are an artist or whatever you are and you have this audience that follows you and wants to see what you're doing, what you're saying, places you are, I'm not going to get to those people myself, you know, mm-hmm. the people who really want to see it. So why wouldn't you want to put it out to them kind of thing? But also it's, if you took the time to sit down with someone, wouldn't you want to make sure as many people see it as possible? I don't know. I guess the more you get interviewed and the bigger you get, maybe you just don't have time or care to pay attention to that. But I always try to show people the respect that I would hope for in that sense. So like hard relate. (laughs) <laughs> I relate hard to that. It's true. So, like, if I'm going to be on someone's show, I want my audience to see it and pay attention to it, you know? So, like, I'll just skip that week and put something out next week. But uh, we're screwed now because everyone's expecting me to talk about the VMAs tomorrow. Well, I I, I kind of go under the impression, not to, say, not to say that if I'm a guest on somebody else's show, I won't put out a show, but I, I'm... Not and, and and this isn't to like come at my own self or like like uh, de- demean myself or like attack myself in any way, but I don't feel like the demand is that hard out there for me to put out a new episode. Like no one's clamoring for a new evolving with Corey Castle episode. If I don't put one out, like I just told you today, I hadn't recorded one since July, right? And here we are in September, and I'm this is my first episode I'm putting out. It's not like my inbox is filling up with people being like, "What happened? Why right. didn't you put out episodes?" So I, I'm, I, I'm, I, I, I'd like to try to stay as stress free about it when it comes to when it comes to the schedule, like because for sure I like to have things in the bank. You know what I mean? Like have stuff scheduled for months in advance and weeks right. in advance. But you know once. Big events like you know this this uh, moving and this engagement and this this sort of whole new step in life. It's uh, it's like if if the people the people who this is going to speak to the most, the people who this is going to be most important to, the people who want to seek it out will seek it out regardless of if I put it out today, tomorrow, right. Monday, next week. Uh, not to say that I even have anything else scheduled. Right. I have like a small cult of people who will be on my fucking ass the week that I don't put out an episode. And it's the people who listen to it like either on their way to work or when they're like pain in the ass kids go to bed on their drive, whatever. It's like some people's, it's the most interesting thing and the most exciting and fulfilling thing that like it becomes part of some people's routine so I have this like little cult of people that God forbid I miss a week. They're like, what the fuck is going on? And I'm like, that is so good for me because uh, no matter how many people it is, it could be one person. It could be 5 motivated. million people. It's motivating and it helps like hold you accountable if you feel like you're going to disappoint someone. But I still have weeks where I'm like, fuck you, I'm busy. <laughs> Can I see your middle finger again? <laughs> this one's got a tattoo, so that's fun. I, I just 
I just, I, I, I always, I'm, I always wonder about some people's decision to throw the thumb in there too. Like, and then this one, you did it. And oh, wow. So, Honestly, I'm not a big middle finger person. I don't like. Okay, people the, do it. so it was just it was just the the the, the sentiment that it represented. It more just than... came out. It just mm -hmm. came out. Yeah, uh -huh. I don't really love the middle finger. Um, and I definitely don't like when people post pictures giving the middle finger. Although I did post one of those this summer, but it was a really good picture, so I made an exception. It's sometimes trashy, but also it's like it's like the same way smoking cigarettes is trashy, but sometimes it looks cool. You know, I, I just feel like in my 30s, there's things that I'm like, mm, I'm a little old to be acting like that. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I got to hold, I want to hold myself to a higher standard than that. At 25, whatever. At 32 almost. Mm -mm. There, yeah. Well, in my 20s, there's plenty of pictures of me with the middle finger up, I'm sure. Yeah, for sure. And smoking sure. cigarettes and I don't probably joints and now I'm like I don't need to take pictures of that stuff. I can just do it if I want to. I didn't smoke cigarettes ever. I've never been a cigarette smoker. I but wish I never started back then, it's, but it, it's it sometimes is cool. Um it uh, in in movies and stuff when they're smoking cigarettes they're, they're fake cigarettes. Right? Like uh, I I've gotten fake cigarettes from movie sets. Oh, I want to try that. And I, I smoked them in in a, in a movie. Um, I, I stole them from one movie set and and uh, smoked them in in another movie that I wrote and directed and and starred in. And I was what like, "What movie is that?" Uh, I. <laughs> it was a it was just a short film that I made. It's on YouTube. It's a, it's called Bruce. Uh, I, I we might have actually even talked about it. Uh, before when we talked, it, it's from we shot it like right before COVID. Mm -hmm. We could have and, talked about it, but a little. Yeah. I mean, did we listen back to our old episode to be prepared? No, neither mm -hmm. of us did. So, no. Oh well, no. no. But we may never know. It was, it was a it was a little uh, alternate universe uh, Batman storytelling sort of fun. I was gonna say, who's Bruce besides my grandpa? Yeah, so it was Bruce Wayne. It was um, we did we did the whole story of uh, instead of. And I, spoiler alert, it's only a 15 minute short that came out four years ago. So it's not like it's going to hurt anybody's feelings. But uh, we did a thing where it was um, Bruce. No, 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 no. Don't tell me. I'm going to watch it. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Never mind. I'll send you, I'll send you the video. Oh, actually, maybe I can mute my headphones if you want to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure I care to tell. I don't, I don't like when things get spoiled that I intend to watch. Are you a Batman that, fan? That yeah. The, what's what's funny about that is, um, I am the opposite of that. Like if somebody s tells me about something they like and they like throw spoilers in there and they're and they're like, oh, spoiler alert! Like you might not want to watch it now. I'm like no, even with the spoilers, I still want to watch it. Like if I, you were to tell me about a really interesting movie that you saw and then you like pretty much explain the entire movie to me, that doesn't mean I'm not going to watch it. And that doesn't I mean I'm not going to want to. It depends on how much you care about something. Like, I love the Scream movie franchise. It's my favorite horror movie franchise. Mm -hmm. And there's another one coming out, and I'm hoping to God that it's the last one they make. It's time to, like, wrap it up. Um, but I follow all this specific channel that does, like, the breakdowns of the leaks and the rumors and what's happening with this and the cast and as it's leading up to the filming and then release of the movie. But like certain ones, when they say that there's spoilers or like script leaks in it, I avoid that. I don't watch it. I don't look at spoilers if they leak the ending. Like I want to be surprised with something that I'm really looking forward to. And I usually mm -hmm. hate surprises. Hmm. Yeah. I'm weird. I didn't see, I didn't see six or, or like five or six. I don't think I saw, um, I saw up to four, and then I didn't see, I didn't see the last two screen movies. You have to see five to understand six. I could have done without five because six is way better. Mm. But without five introducing some important new characters, you won't get six. But then they just abandoned that because they fired the lead girl from five and six randomly. It's very strange what they've done. I don't know how they're going to salvage seven. 
I watched the the series also when it was first on MTV. Mm-hmm. Like they made a whole sort of like completely different. Yeah, I watched it. Thing. Uh, I uh, there was a line. I love this line. I just they they said this line on an episode of that show, and I just loved it. And they said, uh, "A bomb doesn't become a bomb once you light the fuse." It's a bomb the whole time. And I, I love that line. And I was like, I'm going to use that for something. That's I still pretty know. interesting. Yeah. I never liked the series as it was airing. Like, I was like, this is stupid. But then I watched it a couple years later, the both seasons. Because it was on um, I y- Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, en- I enjoyed it a lot more. I just think, like, I, f- I don't know. I feel like it was so far separated from the movies, what they are. I just feel like it should have been its own thing. And they, and I think they called it Scream just to like really draw in that fan base. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the was problem. A, there was, a, there was a, a small bit of the Scream formula borrowed. Yes, yes. But, but it, wasn't, like, it wasn't full Scream. No, and then I think in a last ditch effort, they did a third season that was completely like the first two seasons were the same characters and the story went together. The third season, they just completely did something else and they changed the costume to make it the one in the movies, the ghost face. And it just, it didn't work. But I like, I like the one you're talking about as a standalone thing. Mm -hmm. What other horror movie franchises are you into? I love Halloween. I love what do you Michael think about Myers. Halloween three? The one where they made the ma- made it about the masks and the costumes. Yeah, it was. I feel the same way. I just told you about the other thing. It was cool, but it wasn't really a Halloween franchise movie because there was no Michael Myers. What was the point? Right. It, it was like the John, John Carpenter decided he wanted to try to make it like this like anthology and let it be whatever it was, and then he automatically ditched that when everyone was like, "That sucks. What are you doing? What were you thinking when you did that?" Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was cool. It just it didn't really fit. But I guess at the time, like when he made the first two movies and then the third one, like I guess it could have worked, and like he could have just totally moved away from that character. But it didn't work. And then every other of the fifty-seven movies they made after that featured the same character. Don't you think that it would be cool if they were to reboot? Halloween three as a premise based on now, like where the masks possess kids, but like through a song played on everyone's phone, like yeah. YouTube, there every ads each ad was like gonna trigger the masks to turn the kids' heads into worms or whatever they did. Yeah, I think that could be really cool actually. I I used to watch so much horror stuff, but I kind of fell off of it. I just, I felt like, I felt like, um, while, while that's entertaining, I just, uh, the, the, the mindset, the vibe that you stay in while you're like gore and violence and all that yeah. stuff it just felt like not who I want to on my daily life be. I mean, coming from a violent pro wrestler. Right, but, right. <laughs> That is ironic. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, um, it's a different kind of violence. It's a, it's a, it's a, <laughs> a whole, it's a whole thing. It's not, I'm not stabbing or killing, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a whole other uh, genre of violence. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I don't feel that way about it, but I'm weird. Like I fall asleep to scream. I find it like comforting. So I used to watch it when I was a kid. And I think I take like, I think I separate that from it because I know it's fake. So in my head, I'm like, oh, this isn't real. Like, it's none of that's real, you know? Do you do you ever listen to the Club Shay Shay podcast? I've heard of it. Oh, I have oh, not heard it. Mm-mm. Oh, they had just had Mar. He just had Marlon Wayans on. Okay, and they talked about scary movie. And it was that was a pretty good interview. Uh, Shannon Sharp is the guy's name. I guess he was like a football. Yes, yes. I've seen clips of that. Mm-hmm. I didn't know the name of the actual podcast, even though I, I didn't know those were the same thing. But um, like Cat Williams was recently on. That I don't was, know like, why. Weird. I just tried to do like a lesbian scissoring thing. That wasn't what I meant to do. Yeah, weird. Um, Sometimes, I mean, I think people do that as hashtags. 
I don't know what I was doing. Say, I don't know. I'm Italian. We talk with our hands. It's stupid. Yeah, I'm marrying one of those. Yeah, good luck to you. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if you're listening, but you know what? it's true. You know it's true. You know, it's it's weird, man. I ran into her dad at the grocery store like three months ago, mm-hmm. and he gave me a big kiss, and I was like, we don't do that in my family. We yeah. We don't do that. <laughs> yeah. I remember laughing about it, and I was like, yeah, I saw your dad at the grocery store, and he kissed me, and she was like, oh, my God, he likes you. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, all like, the men in my family are like that. All my uncles, everybody, grandpa, this one, that one. <laughs> Yeah, they're all like that. It's like a thing. That's why when, like, Andrew Cuomo, they were making fun of him when he got in trouble for sexual assault or harassment. Um, and he was like, oh, I'm not, I'm not weird. I'm just Italian. We, like, you know, we're very touchy. And I'm like, um, I know that that's not the same as what he's done, but he's not wrong. He's not wrong. I'm not saying that there's an excuse for where it went after that, but he is correct. We are like that. So uh, is your family also like real touchy with each other or is it just, just like as the greetings and the, and the, is it like the greetings and the salutations? Like, so Yeah, I, th- I think it's more so that, but I don't know. I guess people are like, when I say touchy, I mean like if I'm talking to you, I might like put my hand, you know, like if I walk by you, I may like, I don't know. I, I don't know how to explain it. I think it feels non-threatening coming from me because I'm a homo. Oh, no yeah, women, that's right. I forgot. No women are going to, like, accuse me of, like, trying to be weird. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I just feel like it's a cultural thing with us. Like, you just kind of, like, uh, I don't know how to explain it. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to walk up to some stranger and fucking try to grab their balls. But that's different. But I mean, uh, maybe, maybe they ask nicely. It depend. I mean, if you... If it's a stranger in a mask and you're also in a mask, maybe. <laughs> no, that's some weird gay business and I'm not into that. <laughs> I'm totally joking. Mm-mm. No experience. Mm-mm, that is not for me. And they're like, this, this is normal. This is how I host my podcast. Mm-mm, no outdoor strange blowjobs with strangers for me. That's what they're into. It's so funny that you're like, oh, my brother's gay. My mom's gay. I'm an ally. And I'm like, really? I'm a homophobe. <laughs> I'm a gay hater. <laughs> well, like my my family, it's, it's it's the weirdest thing. My, I, I don't really, I don't want to like speak negatively about them, but they're not. I, I should say, okay, I, I've, I've, my 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 older sister will accuse me of having a revolving door of girls in my life. I, it, I've always she, had girls. Always is she right. What's up? Is she right? I, I mean, not, not incredibly, but I mean, like I've had, I, you know, I dated a lot. I was, I would always be with different girls and like my brother, my brother maybe has had like two boyfriends and like, he's been, he, he's, he just turned 44 mm-hmm. and he's been single for like 10 years. Mm-hmm. And, and my mom, my mom has been single for probably 12 years. Yeah. And my sister, my sister got married to the first woman that she hooked up with. Oh, wow. Like they're all very like, they're not, they're not very like sherry with the, with the, um, the physical stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I'm, I'm kind of like that, but with, with, but with chicks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and my, yeah. My dad was like, "Yeah, you got that from me." Right. My my dad's got my dad's got kids with different wives and stuff all over mm-hmm. the planet. But <laughs> all over the planet. <laughs> Sometimes I tell my dad, like, I don't know. I know some things that you've done in your life, and you know where you've been, and I hope I don't have like a surprise sibling pop out of the fucking woodwork when you drop dead. I'm, I'm very sure of it. I'm very sure I have. The surprise siblings out there. Oh, no, thank you. I have a brother, and he's, like, the greatest thing a brother could be. Uh, every, anything and everything I could ask for and then some, I don't need to fuck that up with throwing someone else in the dynamic. <laughs> no, thank you. 
Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't even 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 like when I'm thinking about my 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 younger sister's straight, mm-hmm. and she has been with the same guy who's the first guy she's ever been with. Wow! Like, since she was 16, mm-hmm. and she's she's just turning 30 in March. I feel like I could have been that way if I didn't meet some garbage people. <laughs> you, you know, I think. And, and 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 also not trying to not trying to shit on or shoot on any of uh, the decisions my family has made, but um, my sisters have both settled. Maybe mm-hmm. uh, not because how are you going to know? How are you going to know? You don't know anything else besides right. what you already know, and, right? And, and it's just like you convinced yourself self for some like like vague purity purpose right I, maybe i I'm, I'm i don't know and i don't i don't i won't pretend to know or try to guess but if i'm if i'm looking at it from my perspective and my zoomed over it looking down it kind of might seem that way you know it's so interesting too because I spent the majority of my 20s in relationships. The current one's about five years, going on six. And I used to do this thing when I was younger, like, "Mm, I don't sleep around. Like, I'm not this, I'm not that. And now that I'm in my 30s, looking back in my 20s, I'm like, I wish I fucked everyone I wanted to. Anyone and everyone I wanted to. What was that? What did that matter? What was I trying to prove? What does that do for me to myself? Nothing. Who who cares? You know? What was I thinking? As, as, As Oasis would say, don't look back in anger. I'm not angry, but no, I, I'm just, joking, joking. I just think about it sometimes and I'm like, what was the point like of, mm-hmm. of having that mindset? What does it matter? Right. I, um, I bet you there's lots of people that are thinking that way. Probably. Like, but I, I also think the, the gay lifestyle is a little different because... Well, I'm, there's also like... Uh, excuse me. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, go ahead. I think there's like a stereotype to that sort of stuff that comes along with it. Well, there's also the reality of what comes along with it. And unfortunately, I realized quickly when I was younger that I was looking things for things that the majority of that community was not, which is like a relationship and loyalty and monogamy. And there's nothing wrong with people who do things a different way. I, it's just not anything I've ever wanted. So it becomes a little more difficult to find like-minded people in that mm-hmm. community. Um, mm-hmm. So that was an interesting, it still is as an adult, like outside of the, my current relationship, like it's still interesting that so many people are the other way. It almost it makes you feel like you're the odd man out, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is fine. I'm okay with that. It's just, it becomes challenging when you're looking for something that is difficult to find in your designated area. <laughs> but I even know lots of, lots of, gay couples like I'm, I'm i'm friends with a lot of gay couples where they they stay open still mm-hmm. like like it nothing is like truly monogamous or right it's 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 just it's a strange like i don't i i mean i i tried the open thing and i it wasn't for me like i i i think we tried it for not not with my not with my current relationship but uh maybe two previous Right. And it was like, we tried it for like a year or something. Mm-hmm. And it just, like, there's no way to escape jealousy. There's no way to escape feeling emasculated. There's no way to, like, you can't just turn that off. Right. Like, it's, it's, it sucks. And, like, you're not, you're not going to not compare things. You know what I mean? You're not going right. like, to try to weigh things out in your own head. Like and things you're making mountains out of molehills, right? Uh, it's uh, and honestly, it never works. Like I've never heard of a situation where it's worked out great. Like, and I don't want to come off as judgmental because I think that if you're being honest with each other in whatever you're doing, and both parties are okay with it, that's your business. It's not mine. However, anyone in my life that I've known throughout the years who have done that as a couple always end up either divorced or broken up 
or something crazy. Like I've never heard of people doing that as a couple for an extended period of time and the relationship working. Even, even when it comes to like adding a third party or like doing a conceptual third party thing, that's somehow still always is a slippery slope to screwing the whole thing up. And I've seen that <laughs> no happen. No pun intended. <laughs> slippery slope. To screw. Yeah, it, it, it really, it really, I, I mean, I, I've seen it happen too often. And I, I know um, with the relationship that I'm in, I, 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 I'm too happy. I'm too jealous for that. Forget about happy. <laughs> I'm too, je- no, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that attention belongs to me. Right. I will slit someone's throat. My my room will look like a fucking movie scene from Scream. <laughs> Absolutely not. Mm-mm. Uh, so, I, I it's 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 a shame for me to figure out. Like, if I I don't know, like one I didn't re-listen to the episode that we did, which I, I mean <laughs> I, I guess I should have. But I, I might have asked you this already before, but like, what is your relationship? Like, do you have both parents? Is that, did you grow up in like a, a like a religious sort of way? No, neither of my parents are all that religious. Um, my mom did send me to Catholic school for a little bit because I think she thought it was like a status thing um or like uh, i don't know where she thought we were living that the school district wasn't fine because it was i don't know what went on in her head but i went there in second to second and third grade and then i begged her to send me to fucking public school because i hated it and i'm i was very expressive as a kid I, like i still am i was always like expressive and a little bit creative and wearing the same thing every day that i didn't get to choose was very um, it like dampened me a bit. And I know that sounds stupid because it's clothing, whatever. But mm-hmm. I, I felt like how I dressed throughout my years as a kid evolved and changed a lot. So there's a lack of expression. And- yeah. Yeah. yeah and, I, and I was angry. I was like, I hate this stupid, ugly ass outfit and this dumb ass tie. And I want to wear what I want to wear. So that was part of it. And I just, I never have really personally identified with religion. Mm-hmm. I believe in some stuff, but it's not organized religion personally. Um, not that I think there's anything wrong with anyone who does. It's just not my, my thing. So I felt like I was being forced into something that I didn't really want to be a part of. So whatever. But my relationship with my parents has always been, I'm very independent. And I don't like to be told what to do. And I felt like the environment that I grew up in was a little over controlling. And once I got to a certain age, as like a 16, 17 year old, I was very rebellious. And not because I wanted to do any weird or bad things. I just wanted, I I, I don't know, I just didn't want to be told what to do. I felt very in charge of myself. And like I had a handle on myself, even at that age. So I moved out when I was young. I was like, I think it was like 22 when I moved out. Um, So my relationship with my parents has never been bad. It's just complicated. And at times it can be a little distanced because that's who I am as a person. If I feel like something is causing me some sort of internal trouble, I kind of like back away. I think that's healthy. I put my arm out like a push and pull and I control that relationship based on how I'm feeling about it. So yeah, that's that in a nutshell. Well, I saw this, I saw this, uh, like TikTok trend or something where they were like, you know, the thing where like, you put your fingers down if you, if you got this or if you got yeah. that or whatever. And the thing was like, no, they were like, no gay dudes had, were able to keep, to put their finger down when they said like, have a good relationship with my dad. Mm-hmm. And that, that was, that was a, Oh, 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 it might have been so curated, you know what I mean? It might have been so curated that they just took those ones. Yeah. So I'm not saying that that's the, the, the full experience all the way, but like I can tell that most of my gay friends have pretty bad relationships with their fathers. I think that that's so, that makes me so sad for them because any difficulty or trouble 
at times that my dad and I've had in our relationship has never had anything to do with that. It's actually weird. It's always any, any time that we've had anything between us that wasn't positive, it was always to do with something different and we get along really well. And we have a, we have a good relationship. Um, so that makes me sad for people. I can understand that and why, but that makes me sad. Yeah. My, anything to do with my dad has never had anything to do with that, which I guess makes me really lucky. Mm -hmm. What, what do you, um, what do you think, what do you think happens to you when you die? Um, I think that I believe in different dimensions and like a parallel universe kind of thing. And I think that when you die, it's not over, but you go somewhere else. But personally, I don't believe that that's heaven or hell. I think that it's just a next level, almost like a video game. Um, I'm not sure how much you remember of your life, but I do think that there's something to spirits and things that people see and experience. And I think that there's a bit of, they can see us, but we can't see them. And there's something they're conscious of that we're not. And I think that the reason that some people, when they're a little more tapped into things spiritually, things they may see or feel, I think are just somewhere else. And that's my theory that I've thought a lot about with a lot of weed in my system. Deja vu. Yeah, tell me about aliens. What do you think about that shit? Uh, I was about to ask you the same question. Thank God. Kind of, kind of think it's like, uh, uh, kind of think it's it's similar to what you said about dimensions. Like it's really uh, maybe maybe like to think about like how small the Earth looks in like mm -hmm. a a land, like a zoomed out like the whole universe there right to think that the whole universe is empty mm -hmm. of, of like intelligent life and like the only the only smart stuff is on this planet it feels it's kind of like it's a so entitled it's so entitled mm -hmm. yeah uh, i don't know if we'll ever find out i, I hope we do uh I hope we do find out what, what's what else is out there. If there is anything else out there, um, but you know, it might it might just be that might be our dead selves. Yeah, in the future, mm -hmm. <laughs> like that are like in those like um, UFO videos, and like now they they came out during COVID. That's saying, a really like, oh, interesting theory. What if those are us? Because. Huh. There's so many more dead people than there are alive people. So many people, ha so many more people have lived and died than there are alive people now. Wow. Huh. So what if inside of those stars in that big, big, like zoomed out universe lives the, the, um, the, the kings of our past? Honestly, I like that. That was interesting. I never thought about that before. Hmm. 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 Wow. Okay. So. Also, I love how I've been speaking into this microphone as, as if it works. Little note for the audience. I couldn't get anything to work properly with this <sighs> phone set up. So this microphone is just a prop, but I keep talking into it as if it's working. So thanks for nothing. It looks, looks mad as fish, dude. It looks dope, right? Like it's it's yeah. a it's a cute idea, but it's not functional by any means. <laughs> then I'm gonna be real pissed if the sound quality doesn't turn out nicely because my microphone wasn't working on my end. I'm gonna be pissed. I, I mean, uh, anything's better than nothing. You know what I mean? Okay, I don't agree with that. Uh, no, but I'm saying like. If we're go if we're going into the fact that we just had this conversation, <laughs> if if we just had this conversation and it's been it's been fun hanging with you, you know what I mean, and and we've been we've been just being buds and hanging out, and then and then the show comes out and all you hear is me talking to nobody, <laughs> that would suck. Don't if the sound quality if the sound that. quality happens to be a little bad. At least you can hear a little bit back and forth, back and forth, and I'm not just speaking to nobody. I am a sound quality Nazi. Mm. No. No. I mean, 
I think, I think the... Is the Nazi joke too much? Do you think people who identify as grammar Nazis might also be anti-semantics? Uh, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, I think I think when it comes to when it comes to uh, the 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 content of the conversation, when it comes to what is inside of it, it doesn't the the, the sound quality being a little poorer quality. If what you're listening to is something that like actually captivates you, yeah, or like you know, lights your fuse a little bit and makes you go, oh, I'm gonna. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take a step further. And this is a, th a thing I constantly say about the, the, the currency of effort and attention. So if I'm telling you how grateful I am for your effort and your attention, the fact that you could be doing anything else in the world, except for talking to me right now. Right. And you are giving, and you are spending that time. Right. You're spending that effort. You're spending that attention on me. I I'm all the way grateful. So anybody who's listening to this or watching this, if they're spending their time listening to me or, or uh, you know, paying attention, giving me the effort, they had to take extra steps to get to listening to this. It's not like you just turn something on and this is on. Like you'd have to go all the way out of your way to do it. So I'm so grateful for that. If this conversation then prompts somebody to go, let me check out, let me take it another step further with my effort and check out this Mickey guy. And right. check out uh, Pulse Pounding, and and sort of understand what his podcast is all about, and and sort of like dive deep into something. It, it that that sort of matters a little bit more than what the sound quality is. If it's right. if it's a little bad, it's not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, I think I just have come across like I did a lot of research and preparing and testing things out before I started mine because I wanted it to sound good. Mm -hmm. Um. And I think that sometimes I just come across these people who have really big budgets and producers and people kind of working with them to produce something. And then the quality of the sound kind of is suffering. And I'm like, how is that happening? Like, how am I sitting here alone in this living room putting out what I'm putting out? And you have the budget and the help and you're not paying attention to that. It makes me feel like they don't care. I think I was, that's more of what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I, I do totally understand what you're talking about. Like, um, uh, I, I had, I had this guy on my podcast. I, I'm not going to say his name, but he's like been in tons of movies. Like mm -hmm. he's like Hollywood staple. Like you, you would know who this guy was if you saw him. He's been in so many movies and, uh, he came on my podcast and, uh, he, he, was on his he was on his his phone in his backyard and there was the birds chirping and uh, lawn mowers and stuff and he was doing drugs and uh, kind of making no sense and I was like man I thought like you'd have access to like a, a mic and like, like gear and a setup and like you'd care a little bit more about being a guest on someone's show. Right. If I'm if I'm lending you my platform, uh, you you expect somebody to show up with a little bit of respect for themselves, right? So I fully understand what you're saying. Yeah, I did an interview with this new artist. His name is Leo Lauren. Um, it, that interview will come out in October, and I believe his second single comes out in October. And then there's an EP to follow, which I already heard. It's really good. Um, he showed up to the interview that we did through Zoom with a fucking microphone and I just couldn't get over it. I was so excited. Like most times people will use AirPods or like something. Sometimes people will show up and just have their laptop open and like the echo and it creates like an issue for me in post-production. But he showed up with studio headphones and like a mic, a real microphone. And I was like, this is the greatest fucking thing that's ever happened. Thank you. Yeah. And the interview was bomb. It was so good. I can't wait to put it out. But he showed up with an actual microphone, and it's going to sound amazing. And that just gives me, like, a professional boner. <laughs> <laughs> Boing. Yeah. Wop. Uh, so, 
since uh, it was three years ago since we had this conversation, I don't remember if I used to if I used to uh, do shows this way, if I would ask this, but uh, I had this segment. I have this segment. I don't know if I had it yet at that time. I think I did, but I, I call it audio time travel. Mm -hmm. I'm almost certain that I did. Uh, what that means is uh, right now you're, you'll be speaking in the next minute or two to the people who care about you the very most, but they'll be listening to this 20 years in the future. Mm -hmm. So in, in 2044, people have stumbled across this, this audio, this video. What messages are you giving them time stamped from right here, right now in the present day? Um, but about what specifically about myself, about, about, about yourself message, like any, any, anything that, if you could speak to somebody as, as a time capsule, if you could listen back to this 20 years from now, what would you be telling? What would you be telling yourself? Hmm. Okay. Well, I feel like if I was addressing people or myself with what I hoped I would be like then, I hope that the people in my life value, continue to value the effort that I put into any kind of relationship that I'm involved in, whether it's romantically, family, friendships. Um, I hope that I continue to kind of climb the ladder creatively and that the things that I want and the dreams that I have and the vision that I have for myself is something that I'm able to realize, look back on and be proud of. So I hope if I was sitting in 2024 20, or 2044 rather and watching this that I could be like, oh, wow, like that guy did it, you know? Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's so many things I want to do. I could just sit here and list them forever. But I think those are what are important to me. I hope that I have the same valuable relationships because I think that that's what life is about, how you relate to other people, the people you collect and keep along the way. And I also think that feeling fulfilled in yourself by accomplishing goals and reaching certain goalposts mm -hmm. continues to make you motivated, feel like you've succeeded no matter what those goalposts are. So I hope that at some point, if I could like fast forward and be watching this as myself in 2044, I hope that there's some really visible, huge steps because sometimes the everyday little steps that you try to remind yourself of are not enough. Every now and again, I need like a big one. I need one to be like, hit me in the face and be like, look at that, you know? So I hope there's more of those along the way. What if, what if you could, and this is, I've never asked this before, but what if you could do, make that go backwards and you could, in 2014, your 2014 self, the 12 year old Mickey, what stuff would you say to that guy? Mm, work smarter, not harder. I feel like I would do certain things differently, but you know, the whole hindsight's 2020, youth is wasted on the young, all of the gay old adages that turn out to be true. Um, I think I would just appreciate time differently, my perspective on time and what to accomplish and when, what's important to do and what's not. Not that I've made any like major, oh, poor, I can't believe I did that mistakes, but I think I would have used my time in a more valuable way mm -hmm. and set, set myself up to be able to continue to pursue my creative endeavors for the rest of my life, even if they never got to a point that I wanted them to but be in a different position than I'm in now where the way I'm working, how I'm working, where I'm working, what I'm doing to make money, not that I'm prostituting, I'm just working in a restaurant, but um, shout out to you if you're a prostitute, do your thing. Um, I think I would just make certain changes and realize how much growth happens in your 20s, you know? So I think I would tell that person back then, like, you're gonna- Do you remember what it is that you wanted to be when you grow up, like when you were 12? Like, what was it, the stuff that you thought that you would accomplish? I don't think it was that. I think I always wanted to do something in entertainment. Um, 
back then I probably wanted to be a pop star, but that's not <laughs> in the cards for me by any means. Um, I think I always wanted to do something creative and entertainment, but what I'm trying to get at, I guess without saying it, was I wish that I did something that was more lucrative and stable when I was younger so that what I'm pursuing in the beginning of my 30s felt like the stakes were less high. But then I almost feel like if they didn't feel high, it wouldn't, I might not put as much effort in. And then if I got it, it wouldn't feel as good. So I don't know. I think about these things a lot. I contemplate a lot about my own life, my own thoughts, my own behaviors. And I think about a lot what I would say to myself when I was younger or how I would do things differently. So I hope you feel like I'm on your team. Like oh. I'm for sure at any point, if you're going through anything, if you ever feel like you can't talk to somebody, or if you feel like you need to talk to somebody, please don't ever hesitate to, to call me up. Let me be a resource for you in any way that I can. Uh, Th thank I, you. I, 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 I I, I feel like it's always really important to say on the record how much value I feel that uh, that I, I'd like for us to both lend each other. So I, 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 lo I love that we especially were able to uh, carve out a little bit of this time, even though even though we went a little bit later than we anticipated. Uh, oh, what, do, what do I have to do? <laughs> I, I just want I wanted on the record to let you know that that I appreciate you. And uh, I, I, uh, I'm looking forward to, to, to seeing seeing that uh, 2044 version of Mickey and seeing what you're up to. Thank you, and thank you for all the nice things that you said about me at the beginning that I kind of glossed over like an asshole. I was like, oh, uh -huh. like what an asshole. But I mean, um, dude, accepting compliments is not my easiest thing to do. Me neither. I, I cannot. I mean, a lot of times it's like, I'm. I, I want to, I want to, do I want to be humble or do I want to appear like I'm humble? I like That's to it. compliment my fucking self. I'll tell you that. Go for it. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite thing to do. But no, I really do appreciate all the nice things that you said. And I feel the same way about you. And I think we should start doing this once a year instead of once every three. Yes, that's, that's correct. Isn't that fun? We'll like check back in. Yeah. I love, dude, I love having repeat guests. I love having, I love having people back on and like just, Dude, the amount of the amount of growth the, the show is called evolving the amount right. of growth that three years has given you oh, like 100%. you're you're like a, a way chill more like mature sort of version of yourself if we if, if we were to like back to back show like clips from these episodes they're probably going to be completely different vibes so i'm i'm excited to have that and i'm excited to see that and I, I can I want to continue seeing that. So let's yeah. let's let's get let's get a, a, an episode of, of your podcast down soon, and then we'll do a, another follow up in another year. We don't have to we don't have to wait every three years to do these. No, definitely not. Silly. Do you do you do any impressions at all? No. Oh my god. No. <laughs> no. No, that is not my strong suit. There will never be a stand-up where you will watch me do impressions. I do like my own voices. A lot of people notice that when they listen to the podcast. Like, sometimes when I tell stories, I have, like, these different voices I assign to, like, different, not characters, but styles of people. But that's about it. Okay, so in your best character, in your in your favorite character that voice that you like to do... The way we wrap up the show is uh, have the guest in whatever their favorite impression is, have them say, uh, be fun, have safe, keep evolving. What is it? Be fun, have safe, keep evolving. Oh, I can't do uh, the specific one that I want to because it's not appropriate. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you why when we are not. <laughs> we're not, when we're not on the air <laughs> when we're not on the fucking record because it is not appropriate and will get me into trouble and if I could tell 14 year old me to to not do that specific impression of a certain kind of person anymore I would because mm -hmm. oh man I used that's... to do that to, I, think I, I, think, I think I know exactly what you're talking about and I, huh. would, do, I would do that so frequently uh, that uh, I would make myself uncomfortable probably hardcore if i dude if social media existed when i was 14 i, I would have been so canceled 
but I got to get rid of some stuff. I'm honestly, I'm just going to have to on, on the come up when the certain point in the come up, I'm just going to have to tell it all myself so nobody can find it and shock me with it. But, um, that's not the point. So I have this one that I do where I like to make fun of people where I feel like, uh, they're being corny or saying something corny and I just like start talking like this and then I mock them and I'm like, mm -hmm, aren't you so fucking funny? So I guess the line was, um, you, lumberjack? you like that? No, I'm not a fucking lumberjack. That was you. But I think the line was, uh, be, what, be fun, be kind, and be fun, have loving. sex. Did you say be fun, have sex? Have safe. Oh, okay. Like, be, well, be safe, have fun, but flip them. Well, we're going to change it to my style, which is be fun, be safe, have sex. <laughs> <laughs> That's evolving. Perfect. Thank you for your time. Everybody who's listening. Uh, thanks for thanks for the effort. Thanks for the attention. Uh, hit that like button, subscribe, and uh, as Batman would say, tell your friends about me. <laughs> be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. Be fun. Have safe. Keep it